right, looking at 6.3 Pascal's triangle. Looking at the following triangle, you'll see a bunch of numbers showing up on the screen. What these are is each row represents a certain sum of the previous rows. For example, looking up here, you see this one, and then this one is created by the above two numbers. One of the numbers is 0, the other number is 1. This next number over here, for example, 2, is created by the sum of the previous two numbers. And let's look at a number down here. 10 is created by 4 and 6 put together to make 10. So that when we create the Pascal's triangle, this is known as row 0. It has a, a sum of 1. And if we add all the numbers in each of the rows, so let's go back and create this triangle one more time so that you can create this from scratch. So we're going to whip back again and start with 1. The next one will be 1. The next row will be 1, and then 2, 1. The next number, row, will be 1, 3, 3, 1. The next row after that will be 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, and so on, so that we have a total of 6 rows. And you should be able to create, generate this Pascal's triangle in a given moment. You don't need to memorize it. Remember how the, it is created so that you could recreate this anywhere. Now let's look at the sum of each of the rows. That means adding up all the numbers of each of the rows. The first row, or known as row 0, will give you equal to 1. Row 1 will give you a, uh, a number of 2, a sum of 2. Row 2 will give you a sum of 4. How do you know the row numbers? The second number of each row, the second number of each row, indicates the row number. This, the top row has no second number, so that will be known as row 0. The second row is indicative of the row number. So 1, 2, 4. The next one will add up to 8. The next one adds up to 16, 32, and 64. And I'm pretty sure if you look at these numbers, you'd be able to predict that the sum of the seventh row, or row 7, will be 128. Now, all of these numbers play an important part in terms of the row number. These numbers, these sums, refer to how to get the sum of that particular row. For example, 1 is equal to 2 to the power of 0. Where have we seen 0 before? Remember that 0 is the row number. Next one will be 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of the row number. 4 is 2 to the power of 2, 8 is 2 to the power of 3, and so on. What this will give us is that any sum can be determined if we know the row number. For, don't for, not forgetting, though, that the top row is known as row 0, because, again, the second number indicates the row number. So example 1, you're asked to determine the sum of the terms in row 15. The sum of the rows of the terms in row 15 means in row 15 I want 2 to the power of 15. That will give us the sum of that entire row. The sum of 2 to the power of 15 is 32,768. All right. So this is Pascal's triangle, and we can use Pascal's triangle in uh, another part. Each term in Pascal's triangle be, can be described as a combination of the numbers above it. TNR represents a term in which Pascal's triangle, in Pascal's triangle, where N represents the horizontal row number, and R is the diagonal row number, known as the position number. So what we have here is n would be the row number, and r represents the horizontal row number, uh, sorry, the diagonal row number. In other words, the position that it's in. 
Okay, so let's look at an example so that you understand. In the original Pascal's triangle that we had earlier, here it is, I'm going to show, tell you what each of these represent. For example, this one right here is in row zero, position zero, okay? Row zero, position zero. This one is row one, position zero. Row one, position, row two, position zero. Row three, position zero. Row four, position zero. Row five, position zero. Row six, position zero. So if you can imagine, I'm just going to use the bottom row there. So this is row six. So in other words, T6, position zero. And what would the next number in that position be? Well, the next one will be T6, position one. Then the next number here. This will be T6, position 2. So again, it stays the same row number, but it moves positions. So we're moving positions in. This one will be T6, position 3. Next one, T6, position 4. The next one, T6, position 5. And the last one, is T6, position 6. So the first one, TN, represents the row number that we were talking about, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. R represents the position that it's in. Okay? So there's position 0, position 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to the number that the row number is. So N at most can never equal R. Neither... N will never ex uh, will sorry R will never exceed N. Okay, in other words, we will never have a bigger second number than the first number. This is going to be important when we look at binomial expansions. Now let's go back and look at what we can do with this. So I'm just going to erase this, and what we're going to do is look back and see what else we've got here. For example, let's look at this four. What is that term? Well, that's term 4, position 3. Remembering that the first number starts off at 0. How is T4, 3 important to us? Well, let's look at another number. Let's find T5, 4 for a minute. T5, 4. Where is that? Looking on the line, we need to find row 5, position 4. So we start with 0. This is row 5, position 0, position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4. So this number is row 5, position 4. Now, how is row 5, position 4 created? Well, it's created by T4, 3, which is what we have there, the one that's circled, plus... T4, 4. So we take 4 plus 1, and that gives us 5. So that will be that position. T5, 4 is 4, 3 plus 4, 4. All right, let's look at another example. T6, 5. How can we create T6, 5? Let's find where that is. T6, 5, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is T6, 5, which is right here, and that equals a combination of T5, 4 plus T5, 5. All right. Okay, let's erase that. Now let's go on to something important. Pascal's triangle is also used to expand binomials. So we use it in binomial expansions. It's kind of a binomial theorem or a binomial way, it's in a binomial expansion using pi, pi, a Pascal's triangle. So example of that is a plus b to the power of five is equal to, so we have to look 
onto the exponent here, that's up here, refers to the row number. The row number we're looking at is row 5, so that would be this row. The second number is indicative of the number we're looking at here. It's always that. Okay, now what we do is write out this whole row if we want to expand this. So we write out 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So that is that whole row. Next, what we do is we take each term. There are two terms in this binomial, term, term A and term B. And we're to put term A and B beside each one of these. So A, 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 and A, and Bs. Okay, next, we're going to add all of these together. Okay, now look at the numbers that are popping up there. What are those numbers all of a sudden that showed up? Well, what it is, is that this is going to be row 5, so the first term gets the highest exponent. The second term gets 5 plus what gives you 5? So the sum of these numbers will always be 5. So the number is going to be 0. So this refers to the first term, remember, was called row, uh, term 5, 0. That helps you start with what numbers you're going to assign to the first term and the second term. And that's the only time that we pay attention to that. So as the first term is called term 5, 0, we assign 5 to the first term, 0 to the second term in the binomial. Next, the sum of these numbers always has to be 5. So as A is decreasing, so going down by 1, b is increasing, and it goes up by 1, so that the sum of those numbers will always be 5. And we do the same for the next one. Go down on the a, up on the b. Down on the a, up on the b. Down on the a, up on the b. Down on the a, and up on the b, until we have no more a's left. We can't go into the negatives. So the idea here is that we can expand this problem to be a to the power of 5 plus 5a to the power of 4 times b plus 10a cubed b squared plus 10a squared b cubed plus 5ab4 plus b to the power of 5. All right, let's look at some harder examples in the next video. See you in the next video.